Welcome everyone to this footage that you are seeing. This is something that we've put together from our excursion to Sieva Damme Nature Reserve there in the north of Bloemfontein. So the reason why we do this is that we believe that putting ourselves into different spaces helps us to better understand how God is asking of us to be willing to differently embody Him and the calling that He has for His church in different circumstances, different spaces. So as a congregation, we try to move ourselves into different spaces. And this one is easy, it's beautiful, it's nature, and it exclaims something of who God is and His glory. So let's just pray together before we continue. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for the privilege of walking your beautiful earth, of knowing the beautiful colors that you sketched into the cross and the trees and the rivers and the dams and everything that we see and taste, that it's beautiful, that it's part of how you lined us up, how you taught creation to, to shout your worship. May you move our hearts by what we see and with what we experience today so that it brings some glory to your name. In Jesus' name, Amen. So I decided to um, today speak on Psalm 63. And before we come to, to this specific psalm and, and try to little bit dive a little bit deeper into the psalm, I would like to start with a remark on the biblical worldview of the Mideastern person. So we have been brought up in a community, faith communities, uh, South African context even, where the Greek philosophical way of thinking about life has been quite instrumental. There's some major positives out of that, but the reality is if we speak about worldview, that our worldview, especially our Greek roots with regards to our worldview, is different from those of the of the biblical scholar. The biblical scholar does not uh, firstly ask, is God? The biblical scholar loves to ask, who is God? Assumption almost of the fact that God is. And so it's an integrated discovery of God that's already there and present in the most grueling circumstances, the, the dust, the beauty, our thoughts and emotions all intertwined like a great, great engineering work partaking in, in God's busyness in the world. And so if we read now, if you look at the footage that you see of our exploration of spirituality, may you be aware of the fact that God is intricately part of our worldview. Let's read. Psalm 63, a Davidic psalm, when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O oh God, you are my God whom I seek. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. Like a land parched and weary from lack of water, so longing I have seen you in the sanctuary, beholding your strength and glory. For your, lo for your loyal love is better than life itself. My lips have praised you. So I will bless you as long as I live and in your name lift up my hands. As with the food of a feast, my soul is satisfied, and with my joyful lips my, my mouth praises you. As I remember you upon my bed, in the night watches I meditate on you, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I have shouted for joy. My soul clings fast to you, your right hand upholds me. Those who seek to take my life will be destroyed. They will go down into the depths of the earth. Those who would hand over the king to the sword will be left as food for jackals. But he will rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him will rejoice, for the mouths of lie speakers will be shut up. If we journey within this psalm, I would love to start with a word, and this word is quite central in the psalm. It is the word that we translate as soul. It is the word nefesh, and in the Hebrew language it's got numerous meanings. Just to put it into perspective, I want you to keep in mind that the biblical 
Hebraic language consists of around about 8,500 words, where our modern English language today consists of around about 170,000 words. And so if you have to say something out of a language with 8,500 words, versus a language with 170,000 words, you would understand that words are loaded in the Hebraic language in the sense that these words try to communicate or can communicate on different levels. It's like when we hear the word Adam, we just hear the word Adam, but the but the scholar of, of, of biblical world, worldview will hear the word of Adama, which is the word for dirt, ground, that which we are made of. And so in that same sense, nefesh means soul, but living being means life. It means self. It means person. It means desire or your appetite, your emotion or your passion. And so when we read the psalm, it tries to talk to three different aspects of our nefesh. It tries to speak to our total being, tries to speak to our desires, it tries to speak to our life in its most holistic form. And so this psalmist in verse 2 says, O oh God, you are my God whom I seek. If you take your nefesh, your being, your desire, your life. I want to ask you, what, what is it that you are seeking with all that you are? I want to continue and I'm just going to pepper you a little bit with a few questions. In verse 4 we read, your loyal love is better than life itself. And that makes me think that you dictate certain value to certain things in your life. Some stuff you would most probably label as well this is life giving this is or this is my life my my family is my life and and so the question that i want to leave you with is what's your life what gives you meaning what is the things that you cling towards as life and so the question then is if you can answer kind of what is it your what is your life what what are you willing to leave behind what are you willing to put aside so that you would be able to grasp to accept to receive the true life and the love loyal love of God that's better than life how, how much would you put down so that you can take that up then jumping to verse 8 and 9 for you have been my help and in your shadow the shadow of your wings I've shouted for joy. My soul clings to you. I would like to ask you, what is the things that give you life then? What is the things that moves your nefesh into spaces of blossoming? What is the water on the roots of the grass after a fire has destroyed everything? What is the things that, that give you life? And then lastly, I want to again invite you with this psalm to be and move into spaces of longing and seeking, to be attentive on the fact that our total beings, our desires, our life are actually looking for someone, something to quench our thirst. May you discover that God already does that, that He's the one that we call the fountain of true life. And may your soul, your longing, your being be restored within this beautiful person of Jesus. Have a blessed day.